my farm is Bare Knuckle Farms. It's up in Northport, Michigan, just about uh, 20 miles north of Traverse City. And I started it two years ago, spring of 2009, and it's a really small uh, vegetable farm. And we have a herd of chickens, ducks, and geese, and hogs. And this year we're adding goats as well. So we have three markets up in that area that we primarily sell to. And then whenever I'm coming down to Chicago, I'll bring a carload of, of stuff for for people. This week some people are buying pea shoots and some greens, some kale and salad greens as well as rams. So does your car smell like rams now? It does, it always smells. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, the whole story about how that's how Chicago got its name because of the like garlicky onion -y smell. That's just how I smell now in the spring. <laughs> always. <laughs> it's not like green tea or black tea which go through a drying and roasting process that oxidizes it. So it's very, very delicate and very light, so it takes a really subtle hand to not overpower it. And I thought, well, maybe I could do some sort of like tea-infused salt. So I wanted to take the tea, um, and I've got big chunks of uh, pink Himalayan salt. So I boiled that in the tea to try to get the tea and then precipitate the salt back out. A little bit of water, just enough to kind of dissolve the salt. And then I just chucked uh, some of the tea leaves straight in with it to get it. So it's basically, it's gonna make the tea while it boils and then it'll, the salt will all dissolve and then it'll start to reduce down. I've never heard of kind of infusing salt with other flavors. Have you done that before? No, yeah, I <laughs> just kinda wanted to see if it would work. These are the pea shoots. We started them um, about two and a half weeks ago. And then the radishes are from my farm. These are chariot radishes. Um, the little red guys that are nice in the spring and it's been a cold spring up where we are So we don't have any asparagus yet. So this is actually from Mick Klug. Um I like to use the like fatter asparagus for slicing raw But I like the thicker one because then you get kind of the nice fatter bigger slices and asparagus is another one of those things that I wish more people ate raw It's like scallops. They're so good raw um, and they often get passed over We'll cut just a couple of pea shoots. These are still a little bit tight. They're a little bit young. It's starting to pick up the flavor of the tea and the tea has changed. It's, it's opened up, sort of unfurled some and is kind of steeping in that, that liquid. So this is the hiramasa. And tell us again what that is. Hiramasa, it's a yellowfin. Um, I've had it mostly at in sushi places. Uh, v uses it some for crudos, for the amuse. And just, it's got a really nice sort of light, bright flavor. So here's the, the, the sea salt as it's, so it kind of just dries out on the pan. And then you can just take it and kind of scrape, scrape that salt off. And that's pretty much what I made last night. So using this instead of a finishing salt over top of the fish so that people will get some of that salty flavor and the tea flavor as they eat. I asked like 10 or 15 people, what do you think of when you think of tea? And top lists were uh, lemon and honey. This is Marianne's sort of famous salad vinaigrette. It's uh, lemon, a little bit of honey in the base, and then olive oil. And then over the top of all of it is an idea that, speaking of stealing idea, that I stole straight from uh, Graham Elliott. I made a granita out of tea, so it's mostly tea, but the, the sugar and the salt will help just keep it kind of from just forming ice cubes. It's, it's funny, you know, you keep fish on ice all the time, but so rarely do we actually combine fish and ice in a dish. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's, um, hmm, the salt is, is interesting with that. Because it, uh, it, it, it's definitely pronounced, I think, with the tea flavor again, pretty light. She's really great. She's a super badass baker. They have a little bit of cyanide in them, so they have to be dried a specific way. And they're kind of, is it safe to eat them? For the most part, it is, um, because they're a big part of Italian cooking and uh, Middle Eastern cooking.